And this is the home of Bill Monroe, the great legendary father of bluegrass music. Um, and now we're going to head on over to his home place. Two-thirds of a mile through the woods is the home of Uncle Penn's dearest friend, Clarence Wilson. He's a musician, farmer, country lender. Char uh, Clarence and his wife, Minnie, took care of the legendary Penn after his hip was broken. The accident occurred when Uncle Penn's mule slipped in the mud and pinned him and his fiddle underneath. Years before, Uncle Penn had lived with the Wilsons helping them on the farm. Uncle Penn and Clarence played square dances often. Sometimes they were joined by other locals, musicians, including Cletus Smith and virtuoso blues guitarist and fiddler Arnold Schutz. Arnold was from Cromwell, Kentucky in the southern Ohio County. Bill Monroe credits the African-American Schutz with helping him put the blues in bluegrass music. The only known pictures of Uncle Penn were taken by Clarence Wilson's daughter, Flossie Wilson Hines, when she was a teenager. The Bill Monroe Foundation is a nonprofit organization with the mission of creating a living history memorial to Bill Monroe, the father of bluegrass music, through the restoration and preservation of the Monroe family farm, the Monroe home place, the town of Rosine, Kentucky, and the creation and maintenance of the Mill Bill Monroe Museum, while preserving the source and heritage of this pristine and original art, American art form, the Bill Monroe Foundation will work to enhance the educational entertainment and recreational qualities of this project. The Bill Monroe Foundation places the highest regard on authenticity of restorations, musical presentations, outdoor dramas and displays, and the preservation and pro propagation, propagation thank you, of the Bill Monroe style of bluegrass music. The Monroe Home Place has been called the most musical home in America. It is not only the birthplace of three famous musicians, it is also the birthplace of the American musical form known today as bluegrass. After farm chores were done, the home was a magnet that drew local traditional musicians, including Bill's legendary Uncle Penn. In the summer, the music and dancing took place on the porch or in the yard. In the cooler months, furniture was moved outside and the square dances were held in the home. There has been so much music played in the home that the fibers of the wood actually changed in response to the vibrations. The end result is that the home has been a musical instrument itself. It is believed that this is the original home site of the first Monroes who arrived here from Virginia in 1832. Bill was born in a log cabin on this site in 1911. The log cabin was destroyed by fire when he was five years old. This framed house was built on the same spot around the original sandstone chimney. The Monroe home place was restored by the Bill Monroe Foundation in 2001. The chimney that was in the in the structure that was there before. Is that your mother in your car? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, her and I. Hey, it's the girls' room and the living room is what I've been told. So uh, <laughs> take it from there. This was Melissa's rocker, and I'm sure she rocked Bill in that rocking chair. It has been refinished. So. Soft part of it has been refinished, but that was her rocking chair. And as I said, Bill was born in a, I don't know, as a cabin or another house that was here, and this fireplace was in it. And you can see the unique masonry work on this fireplace, how they chipped it out. And, uh, it's quite a unique fireplace. It opens up into both rooms, but it's two separate chimneys. Uh, 
So that's where, this is where he was born and grew up. He moved, they moved into this house when Bill was about seven years old. And he, um, there's a picture of him when he started first grade. Down here, there was a little Horton school just down the road, a little ways, and then you can see his brothers and sisters that were in school with him. Bill had a cross eye when he was born, so he was kind of made fun of, and lots of times he'd spend time over the house or in the barn or somewhere to get away from the kids and his brothers and sisters and other people who were making this is Melissa in the Buck's bedroom. That's their original bed, and that's the original uh, chest. So I'm surprised there's as many original things as there are because the house was just people would move in and out and um, some things would, you know, get moved here and there. The quilt was made by a lady in Lone Jack, Missouri. She was here and she went home and made that quilt and sent it back in 2000. Took her a year to make it 2004 to 2005. Wow. And you can see so many of his uh, songs, oh, yeah. items, and like here's the white note, and here's Bill and his needles, and his needles, WSM, Randall Opry, uh, Decca Records. Um, Bill loved to play baseball, and he'd always ask his bluegrass boys if they could play ball. And then they would go, <laughs> they would set up their tent, and then they'd find a team that they could play ball. <laughs> just a lot of things in his life. And this is Uncle Penn, and on the other side was a portrait. Mm. There were a bunch of them. Bill had two children. He had James, whose picture is underneath the bills there on the wall. And then this is Melissa right here. Melissa died when she was in her early 50s. They think she had leukemia. But um, that's a picture of her saying she never married. She was singing with Bill. And he said when Bill was little, there were so many people around the table that he had to stand and eat. He had a little blue bowl. He ate on up. And then ironically, several years later, he's not going to left here because brothers and sisters have all moved away mm -hmm. and mom and dad died. Bill was in four Hall of Fame. He was in bluegrass, country music, songwriters, and rock and roll because um, Elvis sang his song, Blue Moon of Kentucky. And they met at the opera, and uh, Elvis was just kind of afraid of what Bill might say when I mean, Bill was growing up. But this is their room. <laughs> There's a picture of the house before it was finished. You can see how bad it was oh, before yeah. they fixed it up. You can see the tree out there in the yard. That's a gorgeous tree to have, you know, sit there and have lemonade. And yes. And those pictures over there that fly over the bottom that kind of make a half circle. Mm -hmm. That's the last time Bill was here. It was a year before he died. And they even had a big thing down at the barn and Rosine and presented him with a bronze bust that's on the front of the barn mm -hmm. down there. Bill didn't <sighs> see the house after it was finished, but he was here when they were getting ready to um, excavate it. And, mm -hmm redo it and this ironing board is just like mine is that right? ironing i mean <laughs> ironing board this <laughs> i may have an uh, electric iron but this ironing board is just like the one i have you know now they have cordless half a mile or so to the south of here is just jerusalem ridge it was made famous by Bill Monroe's 1975 instrumental recording of the same name. Slightly higher in elevation than Pigeon Ridge, where the home's place stands now, Jerusalem Ridge was one of the places where Monroe menfolk went to hunt. That's where we fox hunted when I was growing up, Bill Monroe once said. I have loved that area ever since I was a kid. In the 1920s, Bill and his father, J.B. Monroe, would take their foxhounds to Jerusalem Ridge, turn them loose, and sit by a campfire listening to the dogs bark as they chased fox. J.B. once asked a friend who was there, ain't that the prettiest music you ever heard? This is words to one of Bill Monroe's songs on my way back to the old home. Back in the days of my childhood, in the evening when everything was still, I used to sit and listen to the foxhounds with my dad in the old Kentucky hills. Soon my childhood days were over, I had to leave my home, for dad and mother were called to heaven and I was left alone. High in the hills of old Kentucky stands the fondest spot in my memory. I'm on my way back to the old home, 
the light in the window I long to see. I'm on my way back to the old home. The road winds up the hill, but there's no light in the window that shined long ago where I lived. Now, if you will look closely, there is now a light in the window. 